I think I think everyone has asked themselves the question about you know how do I know when I've met the one? How do I find the one? Um, you know, that, the questions along the, that along there. And really, I want to look at this. Uh, th there's two different answers to this, uh, one from a Christian perspective and one from a non-Christian perspective. But both of them come to the exact same conclusion. So I'll just go ahead and cut to the chase here. Um, there is no such thing as the one. Once you get past this, it's a lot easier. See, we, we concern ourselves about finding the one and making sure we're getting this perfect relationship that just doesn't exist. And so rather than just finding someone we connect to and, and who has similar goals to us um, and just someone who, you know, who we can build a, a future with, we go out on this pursuit of this perfect person to get with that doesn't exist. Um, see, in the Bible there's a story where a man named Abraham uh, sends his servant to find uh, a wife for his son. And he doesn't want her to be uh, from Canaan, which is where he lives, modern-day, you know, Palestine, Israel, that area in there. Um, so he sends him to go uh, find um, his brother's daughter uh, to, uh, to for his son to marry. And so the servant goes, and God, long story short, God guides his steps, and he's able to find her, and they hit it off, and everything goes fine. Well, so from that one isolated story, a lot of times Christians just make a whole doctrine about it where, you know, there's this one person out there where, where God, you know, has preordained you to, to accept this person. And, and there's nothing in the Bible that even remotes about this, remotely, remotely hints about this. What you do see is God saying, okay, well, if you can't control your passions towards somebody, marry them. There's nothing wrong with that. We see God saying, you know, hey, uh, go out and multiply. Okay, you know, go ha go get married, and, and that's great. We, we see in Genesis uh, in chapter 2, chapter 1, chapter 2, that God gave sex and, and, and marriage for that. Okay, we, we see all that. Great. Awesome. But we never see God say, there is only one person out there. You have to find them. Well, Let's, let's throw out a hypothetical. Let's say that that one person lives in, oh, I don't know, China, and you live in America. What are the chances that you're going to learn Mandarin or one of the other many dialects in China and then go to China and find this person, and she's going to be looking for you too, and it's just – it's not realistic. So you know, let's kind of put things in perspective here. However, God knows – God does know what's best for us. Um, and so with that being said, anytime that you're thinking about getting with someone, especially as a Christian, prayer should be one of the first places you go. Um, the Word, does it? are they the kind of person that God tells us to, you know, be on the lookout for in the, in the Bible? Um, or <laughs> are you marrying someone who's a terrible mistake or getting with someone, either or? Um, see, well, I'll get to that in just a second, but... So there, there's nothing wrong with a Christian asking God for direction and finding a spouse, those kinds of things. Absolutely. But that doesn't mean that there's the one. Okay. Also, if you're not you're not Christian, I mean, the same is absolutely true. Um, essentially, if there was a one, that would mean that life is faded. And if life was faded, it would mean nothing really matters because you've been preordained or fixated to do whatever you've done you're going to do. Murderers shouldn't be, you know... Uh, imprisoned or anything because it wasn't their fault they were fated to murder the person. Uh, if, you know, everything in life would have been preordained, prefixed, um, child molesters really no, no reason in persecuting them because, hey, they were fated to do the thing. And so all you see with the idea of fate is the idea of just like palm reading and, and future telling and, and, and what's it called, uh, the astrology. That would mean that our fates are, are ordered by the stars, they're fixated, there's something that we cannot change. Um, so if that's true, then it really doesn't matter if you find the one, because no matter what you do, you're going to get with the one, because you have to get with the one. There's nothing else that could have happened. However, if that kind of leads to the problem about free will, and there's nothing to say that we don't have free will. So all this comes to the conclusion that life isn't fated. There's no one person for you. There's people who you can more, more or less connect with, but that's not fate. 
Um, however, in finding the one, whoever you decide to get with, there's a few things to keep in mind. First off, beauty is fading. Uh, we really hit, hit our peak, you know, in our late teens, early 20s, somewhere in there. You know, and, and finally the zits stop, and we, we, we're, in an adult, we're in an adult body, you know, we're not as dumb as we used to be, all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, just a good time. But that kind of fades pretty quickly. You start getting gray hairs by your 30s or 40s. Um, you start losing hair, as you can see by this. Uh, it, I mean, it just doesn't last for long. Eventually, you start getting the dad bod when you're like 20s, 30s, sometimes 40s, where things just get a little bit rounder than they used to be. You, you know what I'm saying. Beauty is fading. Um, and then some people get with other people just because the sex is good. Well, past good sex is a person. And so there's a few things. First off, if all someone is to you is good sex, that's not a very strong relationship. Second off, what happens if they get hurt and they can't have sex with you? For instance, let's say someone gets some cancer or something, and, and so they're, they're going through chemo or whatever, and so they're just not able to be intimate Okay, or, or something like that happens. Maybe they're in a car wreck or I don't know. Just fill in the blank, whatever. So all your relationship was was sex? See, I mean, there, there's, nothing, there's nothing of substance there. And the problem is people get with people because of sex, because of attraction, because of things just don't matter. Well, in time, those things fade. Do you think you're always going to be as horny as you are right now? I mean, that's just not, it's not practical. Um, so with that being said, find someone who's committed to you and who you can be committed to, and, and they're just a good person with similar goals. You know, uh, hey, if you want to be a pastor, don't marry an atheist. <laughs> I mean, hello. <laughs> you know, find someone who's committed uh, to you and who you're committed to, and, and they're a good person. They're, you know, don't don't get with someone who, who goes out and shoots dogs and, and tortures and animals. I mean, find a good person, and then find someone who has similar similar goals with you, similar, similar life directions. Um, and then also get a people's advice because love is very blind we see what we wanted to see and then you know this goes both ways so we convince ourselves i have to be with this person then we get with them and, and we point out all their flaws and, and all their mistakes and we're like okay i hate this person uh so get other people's advice get you know an objective person you know uh Sometimes our parents are wrong about stuff, and sometimes they're not. <laughs> sometimes friends are wrong about stuff, and sometimes they're not. When everyone you know is giving you the exact same, um, you know, uh, advice about not getting with the person, maybe consider not getting with them. Just throwing that out there. Um, but, but besides all these things, feelings fade. See, our minds tell us, uh, they, they, they pump hormones into our body that make us feel certain things for people. And then we act on those feelings and we get attached to somebody and then we just have somebody who we're just feel like we can't ever live without. And our body does this so that we'll, uh, you know, have children and, and, and sex. It's, it's something that happens in all things that live, that, that mate, you know, it, uh, an animal goes through heat, for instance, and then they just, you know, okay, this is the time my body is ready to reproduce. And, but past those feelings, those feelings do fade. Um, you stay married to someone for five or ten years, even longer than that. I mean, feelings are going to fade, you know. Uh, but that's not to say it's a loveless marriage. It's just to say that you can't be bound to someone based solely off of a feeling. Um, some people are, however, easier to connect to than others. Uh, a lot of times people just have this connection with someone from the get-go. Uh, some people call it love at first sight. It's where, you know, you see someone and you think, wow, this person's just great. Um, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, but, uh, I mean, you can hear horror stories and, you know, stories of, of how it worked out, so it's really both sides there. Um, but a happy relationship isn't about finding the one. It isn't about having everything perfect. It is about being the one. Are you being a person of character to the person that you're with? And, I mean, honestly, past the whole perfection do you do you want to be with this person you know is don't worry about are they the one but worry about is this the kind of person that i want to be with so uh happy relationship is about being the one not finding the one totally different different uh, perspective there have, uh, being the one is more focused on how can i love you um finding the one is more about how can everybody revolve around me but the world doesn't revolve around us so that's probably not a great thing to uh to do